All right, welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 and welcome back to the Simworks Studio Kodiak. And this is, of course, one of the Kodiak tours, uh, which I started quite a while ago, which started off as a VFR tour. We began in Vonnebuem in Pretoria and made our way all the way down here to Kharip Dam uh, with the final destination of, uh, well, we're actually heading to Neisner. That's the, the kind of plan. So the original thing was um, to do like a camping holiday down to Neisner. So we have the cargo version of the Kodiak with all the camping gear in the back. And um, we stopped over here at Kharip to uh, spend the night and continue down to Neisner. Now, what's happened is the weather has kind of set in in the Neisner area. So we're not going to be able to go to the little VFR air, um, airfield that I originally planned and all that we're going to end up for our trip in Neisner. We're going to have to go to George because the weather is not great that side. Uh, George is actually reporting VFR conditions, but it's overcast and it's raining above that. So we're going to have to go IFR and we're going to go into George. And then when the uh, weather kind of clears up, we can make our way into the little airstrip uh, where we will be starting our camping trip. So let's quickly cut over to my iPad where I've got all of the uh, performance stats for today because on these uh, cross country trips, I always go through all of the performance, right? So I've entered in the details for today's flight from Kharip to George. If we go into our weight and balance, we've got 650 kgs of fuel on board. We need 587. So if we just tap there, that gives us enough fuel for the trip plus reserves and alternate. So actually, if we go straight from here to George, we need 262 kgs. We need 587 to give us uh, enough reserves and enough to get to our alternate, which is Port Elizabeth. So we've got more than that on board. So that's all good. We're in the cargo config. We've got the same weights as last time. So the two of us up front and then um, our camping kit and food and clothes and whatever all spread evenly across the cargo bay uh, and the cargo pod as well. In fact, do I actually have anything in the pod? Yes, we do. <laughs> so we've got 30 kgs of like bags and stuff just in the back uh, of the cabin. Then cargo pod in one, we've got 50 kgs, two, we've got 50 kgs, three, we've got 25. Inside the cabin, we've got a total of 200 kgs of stuff. Uh, and then obviously pilot and co-pilot. Then that gives us a takeoff weight of three tons rounded up. Um, so we're moderate takeoff weight. CG is good. Landing weight is moderate. CG is good for that as well. Zero fuel weight is fairly light because we're quite heavy on fuel today. Uh, so that's all good. If we move on to our departure, no meta for Kharip. So um, I think I'll just use George's Q&H and keep that as we go. Actually, no, we won't because we're going to be flying IFR. So I'm going to be using Beyond ATC and they will give us a Q&H and an IFR clearance. Uh, it looks like the weather is actually moving in. Those clouds are getting closer. It's a beautiful early morning here at the dam. So uh, very excited to get up and well, <laughs> we're going to be heading into worse weather. So maybe we should enjoy the view while we can. Anyway, back to our planning. So no matter for this airport. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing close enough to use either. So that's OK. Altitude 4000. So we're just using default winds. I think we'll just check out the windsock, which is right next to us. Wind's fairly calm here, not too much to stress about. So we'll just use uh, the closest runway, probably. OK, pedo heat on, aircon on, bleed, electrical heat, and we will be bypass. So that's all set up correctly. Rotating at 60 knots today. Um, we're expecting to use about 350 meters of runway, which is plenty. There's another 960 after that. 
climb out at 96. I normally climb out at about 110, um, just to give us a little bit more speed. Density altitude of 5,200. Oxygen is all sorted and that's all done. So now we go to our cruise and our route. Okay, cruising at seven and a half thousand feet today. We'll dial in the temperature once we get up there and see what it is. In fact, can I actually... Uh, no, it's fine. We'll dial that in once we get up there. Okay, now let's see if we can check. So if we go into sim brief, uh, does it give us a temperature? Right, so there's our route for today. And I wonder if it's just this up here. Top of climb outside air temperature, eight degrees. Oh, why is this planning? Oh no, that's... Interesting that it's put us at 7,500 because this is an IFR flight. I've only just realized that. That's strange. And I mean, I didn't put that in. It's just done that. That's gonna change. They're not gonna give us seven and a half thousand. They'll, well, we'll probably do 7,000 then. Cause I mean, that's what it's got to our alternate at Port Elizabeth, which is another thing I need to sort out. But let's put in then but let's go and put in our eight degrees. Cool, cruising at 75%, 2000 RPM. Our inertial separator will be on normal, air conditioning on, because it's going to be quite cold. Uh, average wind. Wind 060 at 10. Uh, 10. 0, 060 0 would be a bit of a crosswind. So let's rather say 8. Okay, minimum landing reserve one hour, flight rules IFR. Alternate, now, this is the next issue that I noticed here, is if we go to um, Port Elizabeth, oh, it's already here. The weather there is even worse than George, so I don't think we should use that as an alternate. Because um, it's reporting marginal VFR, broken at 2500, and then looks like it's possibly going to get even worse, ceiling at 2500, which is okay, but it doesn't really make sense to have an alternate airport with worse weather than your main airport. So if we look at George's weather, reporting VFR, it's raining, few clouds, um, at 19 and overcast at 4,900. So our ceiling is almost 5,000 feet. Let's go and look maybe at something like Cape Town, which is gonna be a bit further. Oh no, really? Okay, Cape Town way better, so I think we should probably use that as an alternate, although this was an hour and five minutes ago, but that should then update in the next five or ten minutes. Um, Cape Town is a bit far. Let's have a look here at the map. So Port Elizabeth is right in the thick of this weather. Cape Town is actually outside of all of that. Oberberg is a military base. We can't go there. Plentenberg Bay doesn't have any instrument. Um, well, it has some instrument procedures, but they're all RNAV. Um, hmm. East London is going to be even further than Cape Town, so I think we're going to have to use Cape Town as an alternate. That's pretty far, though. What's Plitz weather like? Uh, pretty similar if not a little bit worse than Georgia. And and that kind of makes sense because the weather is all to this eastern side. So anything this way is going to be worse. We want to go west if we want to get out of the weather. And the only, aside from the military base, which we can't fly into, the next thing 
with an instrument approach is Cape Town. So we're going to do that, I reckon. And then we must just double check. Um, we should still have enough fuel because we've got plenty on board. So we'll let that update. It's probably going to be around 200 miles. Okay, if I just say done, we go back in there, 218. So back to fuel, we now need to uh, 624. We've got 650 on board, so we're fine still. Um, okay, so back here. There we are, two, uh, planning for about two hours and ten minutes down to uh, down to Georgia. I'm going to change that to 7,000 feet because we're not going to get seven and a half. So, extra fuel. We've got, we're, we're planning just over, oh, there we go, at 7,000 feet. Wow, it takes us down to under two hours. We've got five hours of fuel on board. And um, so we've got plenty in reserve. Okay, that's cool. Let's go now to our destination. This is where things get interesting. So that meta is now over an hour old and we've got a brand new one. Scattered, 1800, overcast 4,500. So it's getting worse at George. It was 4,900 on the, on the previous one. So <laughs> we might end up going to the alternate because we've got another two hours to get there. Our ceilings come down 400 feet in the last hour. So the chance of it coming down 4,000 feet in two hours, maybe not, but it's not impossible. It, it could easily happen. Um, so that's cool. It's still reporting VFR conditions. That's fine. Um, QNH 1021 running, uh, running, landing runway 11. Air conditioning will be on. Flaps 35. Okay, landing fuel. Okay, that's all done. Right, VRF 70 knots. Okay, that looks good. So the other thing we need to come in and do is just have a look. We don't have a departure, but if we go here, uh, no, that's where we just were. This is what I wanted. Approach procedure. So it's gonna be a precision approach straight in uh, and then this will fill out as we're planning but um, we've got 22 minutes of hold time with enough fuel to reach our alternate with reserves so if we do need to hold we can hold for about 20 minutes and then we need to go to Cape Town okay so that we need to know let's do our risk assessment so we are IFR um, I'm going to look at our sigmets here. Do we have any red ones that we're flying into? I don't think so because this is not storm weather. Oh, there's red ones out here. And these are thunderstorms. Interesting. Okay, we're outside of that. So we're going to say no for that, but that's very strange. I didn't think we'd have thunderstorm weather here. So that's no possible no. Icing. No icing sigmet, so that's good. That's not what I wanted. But if we do this, and we'll say 7,000 feet. Mm -hmm. They're out there in that weather. It's looking pretty rough, because if you look at that, We've got icing it around. Now, 10,000 feet is actually quite bad. We're getting into the moderate icing there. At 7,000, we're okay. But that weather's going to move in. Wow, look at that. You, and you can see that front coming in there. So we need to be aware of that. Um, so I'll keep an eye on that. But we'll say no for icing now. Autopilot works. First flight after maintenance, no. Previous flights today, zero. Not 15 day, no, 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 no. Okay, departure is dry. Runway less than 2,000 feet. I don't actually even know. Um, why did I just go there? It is. Oh, whoopsie, wrong place. We want to go here. 
Uh, runway. Where does it just tell us the actual... Oh, what's this? Takeoff runway available, 1,300. Okay, so I did it again. Yes. That's all the way down here. Weather conditions, it's VFR here. Wind's not too crazy. Crosswind, no. No, no, uh, no. Yes. I'm see a cruise, not expecting that. Water crossing, no. Mountain crossing, yes, but not beyond our glide. I'm see higher than freezing level, no, no, uh, yes. I think. Uh, let's have a look in here. Wait, no, that's not what I wanted. Oh, it kind of is. Um, it's actually high pressure, it's not a low pressure. That's what I wanted to check. So the blue are the lows, we're actually going into a high pressure. Which is crazy then, we've got all those thunderstorms, but I guess it's just the high pressure air pushing all of that weather along. Um, okay, so we'll turn that off actually. This is going to be precision. It's got a glide slope. No, no, no. Uh, no. Low IFR within 35 miles. Well, there are, I don't think there's any other airports that would report that within 35 miles. Runway condition, we're going to say wet because there's light rain. Runway less, no. George has got a big runway. Weather conditions, we'll say IFR. Just to be on the safe side, wind is not too bad. What was the wind actually? Uh, this is Plet, so let's go back to George. So wind is 090 at 15 knots. No gusts. Crosswind more than 15, no. Low level wind shear, no. Visibility is fine. Temperature, no, no. No precipitation, yes. Uh, I guess we could say yes for that. Uh, and that's it. So we're moderate because of the weather. So we just need to pay attention to our precipitation. And um, the terrain near George Airport is important as well. But that's going to be fine for us because we're on the instrument approach. Okay, so that's done, and I think that that is our flight performance sorted for today. And uh, we are good to go. Let's then jump into the aircraft. And first things first, set up our weight and balance. No, not the weather. Okay. So fuel, we are 650 kgs. So we can look over here, and we want to dial that up to about 650. That'll do perfectly. Then, when it comes to weight and balance. Okay, so 95, 60, then cargo shelf is 30, and then in the pod we've got 50, 50 and 25 and then this we've got 50 across row one so it'll be 25 25 row two is also 50 and i think these are all just going to end up being 25 because it's it's 50 across as spread out over the middle Okay, is that right? So that should give us an empty weight of 1792, that's correct. And then we should have a ramp weight of 2952. Cool, we're one over, that's okay. So there we go. So we're about 60% payload because we came down here with full fuel. So we, we've got less fuel this time because this was right up here near the limit when we uh, left Pretoria. 
but that's fine. So our weight and balance is done. And that means we can start getting things set up. So the doors are closed. All of that is cool. Beautiful early morning. The sun is now up and there's all our boxes of camping gear, which is not how you transport camping gear, but hey. Okay, so let's go master. Nav. We'll turn on the beacon light because why not? We're about to start anyway. Let's just sync this. That needs to be closed. Okay, the route is already loaded. That's good. <coughs> okay, let's do lock and then fuel and then fuel and then lock. Okay, cut off. Just checking that. Okay, this will go to on, ignition to on. And then start it low. Just check that we are clear around. Everything looks good. Okay, start it to low. Okay, we'll let that come up. And then we'll go low idle. Okay, that means we can flip that off, that off, and that to standby. And as our engine comes up, we can now turn on generator and the alternator, avionics and auxiliary bus. Taxi lights on, inertial separator to bypass. Let's get the air flowing in here. Okay, we'll dial this over to GPS. Then I guess we need to contact ATC because uh, there's no tower at this airport. So we'll contact center, I suppose, which is 1185. Uh, this is nav radios that we need to go to the side. Eight, and I'm gonna have Beyond ATC auto tune. Hopefully, this one works. It didn't in the other aircraft. Uh, what was that? The A300, I think. Because dialing this and trying to fly sucks. All right, let's get rid of this. Janusburg sent a good day, Zulu Sierra. Kilo, Delta Kilo, request IFR clearance to George. Zulu Sierra, Kilo, Delta Kilo, Johannesburg Control West. Expect runway 33. Climb flight level 100 on runway center line. Then expect radar vectors at peace. Squawk 1551. Expect runway 33, climb flight level run 100 on runway center line. Expect radar vectors Edgus and Squawk 1551, Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo. I wonder if you'll get that right because I made a mistake. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, oh, cool. read back correct. Start or taxi AT pilot's discretion. Hold for release. Report holding short runway tree tree. Taxi at pilot's discretion and report holding short runway three three. Uh, kilo delta kilo. Okay, we were one five five one. Okay, that's set. Cool, it's on standby. He gave us flight level 100. 
which is interesting. So, yeah, I don't know. I think the Simbri plant had 7,500 in it, but uh, yeah, he's given us flight number 100. Okay, let's put that in so long then. And then it's just runway 33, climb runway heading, and he will give us vectors directly to Ekkis which I miss, or I'm hoping is our first waypoint, and it is, you can see over there, so that's good. Okay, flight level 100, we'll just stay on QNH1013 then, that's cool. Um, right, which one is run runway 33? Three, three? Is it seriously not gonna say on here? Brilliant. The, the numbers are there, actually. He zoom in, I think. Uh, oh, no, do I have to use... It's not a touch screen. That's horrendous. Okay, I'm just going to look on the graph. Right, so runway 33. There, there's no runway 33. must be it must be this one because we are facing that way this is 28 and this one isn't labeled so I, it must be this one here which kind of makes sense okay so we're gonna go straight right and we can take off from that intersection that's fine perfect I think just for safety we'll go flaps one today okay all clear and it's pilot's discretion, there is only one taxiway. Also, there isn't actually a taxiway there. I think we're just gonna go over the grass. I don't know why this shows a taxiway. Okay, but here we go. This side of the fuel truck. We're just going to taxi across the grass. Oh, there's the taxiway there. Okay. The sun is pretty rough. Okay, that is not fun. Right, we're going to go at heading mode, which we'll synchronize with our runway we'll go flight level change and we'll dial this up to about 110 okay we need to hold short here okay i think we're good to go so altitude is set Flight level change is set. Heading, we will sync up on the runway. Flaps are set, we'll do lights once we cleared for takeoff. Routes, all good. Right, we can call for clearance. Johannesburg Center, Zulu Sierra, Kilo Delta Kilo, holding short, runway 33. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, released for departure. Clearance void if not off by 5 FAFT VFAV Zulu. If not off by 5 FAFT VFAV Zulu contact in all way than 6 5 Zulu. Time now 5 THLT VFAV Zulu. Frequency change approved. Okay, so we've got 20 minutes. Clear for departure, Kilo Delta Kilo. Okay, we've got 20 minutes. Uh, landing lights. Pedo heat's on. That's fine, that's good. The strobe's on. Okay, we're good to go. And we'll go mixture or condition lever. 
too high. I don't. It's the other thing. sink ready and then we'll go throttle up and then rotate at 60 knots this piece alive Pilot on. It's gonna adjust forward to pick up speed. 90 knots, flaps coming up. Now we're over those power lines. Right, hopefully, we get a vector before these mountains, but we'll start climbing. Let's put in a little bit more power actually. make it over the this terrain anyway I think we just need to let him know center kilo delta kilo climbing through 4,600 feet for flight level 100 Zulu Sierra kilo delta kilo Johannesburg control west identified Continue climb to your flight level 100. Climb flight level 100, kilo delta kilo. Okay, it should give us a vector at some point because we need to turn left to our first waypoint. Right, what we can do is just come down here and do taxi lights, landing lights, and inertial separator. flashing. I can't want to clear that. That's weird. Uh, oh, I didn't turn this on. That's bad. He should have complained about that. So maybe that's something that Beyond ATC doesn't actually see yet is the actual squawk. want to stop this flashing. Please. That's weird. Okay, we kind of need a vector to the left here. Like now. Alright, otherwise we're good. We'll go heading... Apps are up, power's looking good. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, climb to flight level 200. We really don't want to do that. Climb flight level 200, Kilo Delta Kilo. Send a kilo, delta kilo, request altitude change. 
Zulu Sierra Kilo Beta Kilo, Roger, same new altitude. Flight level 100 for Kilo Delta Kilo. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, confirm new cruise altitude flight level 100. Affirmative, Kilo Delta Kilo. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, Roger, new cruise altitude flight level 100. Need a vector man. Come on. You have to be careful at 10,000 feet because that's where all the ice is. Kilo Delta Kilo request heading to next fix. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, direct headgears. Turn left, heading 220, climb TO flight level 200. Direct Echis, heading 220, climb flight level 200. That's weird because he just said, he just gave us climb level 100. Am I going to have to do that again? And then he said 220 direct to Echo, so I'm just going to go direct. I'm not sure what's happened there. He's forgotten about it. That's where we took off from. The airport is down there. So that's quite long. Yeah, it's all the way there. We're 10 miles without a vector. Okay, let's go direct to Edgus. And we'll go nav. And we're gonna stay at 10,000 feet. Let's see if he complains. We did change that. means we can back off our RPM now to 2000 then I just need to check my app for our cruise power because so we're gonna cruise along for about two hours and our setting was 2000 RPM and uh, 75%. Also, we're now at 10,000 instead of 7. Our outside air temperature uh, is 3. Okay, this is the thing where this app doesn't like anything less than like 15 degrees. Or is it minus? Huh. Oh. Whoops. Okay, and our outside air temperature, two degrees. Okay, it's happy with that. Okay, two degrees, 75%. Our inertial separator is normal. Air conditioning is on, and we're at 2,000 RPM almost. Can bump that up just a touch. There we go. Okay, that gives us a torque of 1107, which means we're going to back off a lot. True airspeed of 146, currently we're 176. Let's bump that power up, no, that's fine. So 1107, we're pretty close, we're 1. 100, 110, 1100 or 1110. There we go. That's the closest we're going to get to 1107. True airspeed is now coming down. And that gives us a 
endurance of five and a half hours. Range with fuel to get to alternate and hold, 382 miles. Okay, nine and a half minutes to Etkes. He hasn't said anything about the fact we've leveled off at 10,000 feet, so I think we're good. True airspeed now 156, and we're supposed to, we're expecting to be 146. It looks like, oh cool, on our GPS course, it seems a bit windy. We've got, holy moly, 37 knots off our right-hand side and slightly behind us. Um, Simbri's thing of flipping 10 knots, not exactly correct, is it? Maybe we should work that out because that's actually going to change our cruise time quite a bit. So we're doing 232 degrees and it's 249. Let's see. So wind is 249 at 37 and we are at 232, which gives us. No, it's not 249, it's 349. I was saying we can't have a 35 knot headwind. That doesn't make any sense. It's 349. Okay, 33 knot right crosswind and 17 knot tailwind. So let's go back into our performance. We'll say 15 knots for the tailwind because it's probably going to change around a bit. 15 knot tailwind. So let's see, it takes our cruise time to 1 minute 50 from 2.15, nice. So we're shaving off a good 20 minutes, roughly. Because yeah, it's going to change, we're now 3.50 at 38 knots. So. Only thing is at two degrees we're gonna have to be careful of icing and on that navigraph chart this is where the worst ice was at 10,000 feet if we get any signs of that we'll drop back down to 8,000 why on earth Simbrief put us at 7.5 I don't know because actually we're going west so we need to be even. So it couldn't be 7,000, it needs to be eight. Just looking at that icing chart again. So we're at 10,000 feet. We're actually not in it yet, but it pretty much starts at Etkus, which is our next waypoint. So that's kind of the edge of it. And we're gonna fly through a patch probably about this size here and then it starts getting chilled again until we get basically to George so Edgar's about five and a half minutes we've got to pay attention when we get there because that's where Navigraph is reporting the icing issues So the area we're in now is reporting trace icing. We're about to go into light and then at Etkus it hits moderate. But obviously this is just theoretical mostly. So we'll keep an eye on the 
windshield to see if we do start picking up ice. Uh, what sort of systems do we have? We've got windshield heat, we've got surface and prop. So we do have a bit of anti-ice options. I'm going to keep it off for now because that'll let us know when we actually start seeing stuff fall. It looks fine. We are two degrees, but it's going to be as we clo get closer, you can see the clouds on the horizon. So as we start getting closer to that moisture, that's when the ice is uh, going to form, if it does at all. Obviously, this is just a forecast. And also, Flight Sims real world weather is not all that accurate when compared to the METARs uh, that are reported IRL. It tends to be, from what I found in South Africa particularly, it tends to be kind of late. Flight Sim takes a while to, to actually realize, like you'll see IFR conditions reported at an airport that was fine that morning uh, and in the afternoon now it's IFR and flights and warning kind of realize that later in the evening so why can't I stop this from flashing this is gonna kill me like, like I need this to not do that what if I put this back into bypass why is that not changing I can't click this switch. That's weird. because I'm in a menu, my word. I still don't understand why that doesn't change though. Interesting. Well, I don't see any signs of ice. Looking good. Okay, one degree outside. I think we're going to start getting icing just now. Um, and then, true airspeed 154, 10,000 feet, RPM's good, torque is good. It's interesting, it's getting colder as we get closer to Edgus. We started off at three, cruised along at two, we're now at one degree outside air temperature. And that Navigraph forecast is bang on. Um, Edgus where the moderate icing starts. A bit of movement in the air. Okay, there's Edgus outside, still one degree.
can do. Let's just have a look at our flight plan. And I wonder... Aha, I can edit this. 10,000. Oh, that's why he's putting us at 20k. Because, jeez. No, man, that can't be part of the procedure. 20,000, I suppose it could, actually. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it is. Oh, wow. I think we're going to need a different arrival, but that's going to really screw with Beyond ATC. That's why he wanted us to 20,000 feet. Port Elizabeth has just gone IFR. So probably a good thing we're not using that as our alternate. going to auto-tune for us. Let's see. 124 decimal 7. Good day. Kilo Delta Kilo. Hey, it did. Sick. Cape Town Control, Zulu Sierra, Kilo Delta Kilo, flight level 100. Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, Cape Town Control East, radar contact. Cool, that's done. Wow, all of the uh, instrument approaches to George start at 20,000 feet. That's wild. Jeez, this one, Gabgo, starts at 26,000. Okay. But we shouldn't actually be doing an arrival. That's the problem. We should be just going straight on to the ILS. Okay. Well, I'm not climbing to 20,000 feet. We'll stay here and let's see what Beyond ATC does. Because in reality, we would just say we can't do that and they take us off that arrival and just get us onto the ILS. So our last waypoint, we'd probably have to get vectors onto the uh, ILS. But what I'm gonna do then is I don't know if you can edit these. Oh, you can. Thought maybe you couldn't because they're part of the procedure. Okay, that's fine. 7,400 is cool. I don't know why that hasn't been. That's good. Should give us a top of descent now. That isn't, <laughs> that's not right. Right, I know we had this problem as well last time where the top of descent didn't make any sense and it's still putting it on that next waypoint. I don't get what I'm doing wrong. Oh, 
why is this one white and not blue like all the others? That's what's causing the issue. Is because it wants us to start descending there because I don't think it's picking this up. Let's put in something different here. Okay, that's better. It's now saying we can't do that. That's good. And now it's turned blue because we've put it in ourselves. And if I do that, where does it say the top of descent is now? Ah, oh, really? Okay, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong with this, but I can never ever get in this aircraft our top of descent to be correct. Oh. Actually, I've just had an idea. Is it because it thought we were gonna be at 20K here, but I can't actually change that because we've passed that waypoint. And why is this crossed out? Because we definitely can do 5,500 at this waypoint, no problem. just not sure but I've had this issue every time in the Kodiak and I think I'm just not doing something correctly and someone said before just make sure you program the uh, altitude in the flight sim map the world map when you set up the flight but I mean, that's, that doesn't solve the problem. I should be able to edit things here in the uh, flight plan. And uh, it should still be able to give me a top of descent. Okay, we're now at minus one. Still not seeing any icing though by the looks of things. So I think we're okay. Maybe I need to go and like go through this GPS system in a bit more detail because I don't understand why that's crossed out. We've got 7.8 miles to descend 2,000 feet basically. That's easy. What's this? doesn't seem to do oh that would probably be the deviation see if we turn this off now does that top of descent thing disappear yes and then turning it back on it just comes back on that waypoint It's definitely looking at this correctly because these, when I dial this higher, says we're not going to be at that altitude, which is okay. But it's still. Still just putting the top of the set. Oh, <laughs> I was so hopeful that it was going to come. Ooh. It's freaking out. Now, is it snapping from down there? It's done it. Uh, and it's back there again. I don't know what it's doing. Okay, then, see, then I just think this is an issue because it had it correct. That's about where it should be, down here somewhere. Because we only have to get from 10,000 to 7,000, so that was correct, and now it's come back here. Weird. 
Anyway, I think no, we're looking good. Are we gonna make it over the mountains at 10,000 feet? Should, should be fine. Might be thrown around a bit over there. Oh, uh, wind has now dropped to 19 knots. from that 38 out in front of this weather system. You can see all the clouds up ahead. Temperature, still minus one. And no signs of icing as yet. We've actually passed through the belts on Navigraph of moderate icing back into the light icing section, so. We'll just keep an eye on it, I guess. Tree speed or 155. Fuel still plenty on board. Okay, I've never actually used any of these systems. So it just gives us like our normal lean. Fuel calculation. It doesn't give us an endurance value, which is weird. Ice protection quantity. Minus two, it's getting colder. I'm pretty sure we're gonna pick up some ice at some point here. And I don't think we're actually gonna be able to descend. If we get into those clouds at minus two, we're gonna get icing for sure. Yeah, I don't know what any of this does. <laughs> hey, top of descent went back to the right place. I don't know, something is not right there. That's where it should be. Just don't come back here, stay there please. No, ah, whatever. Um, okay, so we have the next rad on. And we actually have our charts here. So this is what I was looking at earlier. Is, how do I move this around? Do I have to do it like this? Oh, word. This starts at 20,000 feet, that's why they wanted us up there. Okay, we're expecting runway 11. Okay, minus two. Don't see any signs of icing.
A little bit of movement in the air as well. Oh, this is the better way to do the charts. Like this, I remember this now. Clouds are not far now. Uh, I think we're definitely going to pick up some ice as we head into those. And they're the same level as us, so we're going to be in it. Okay, otherwise, it feels good. RPM top, altitude. True airspeed, still 155. Our tailwind is picking up a little bit again, 20 knots. should be fine at 10,000 feet. If we do go into the clouds, I think what I am going to, no, not this, uh, is do this. So there's a little bit over there. Mind you, we, we've got a chair on our synthetic vision as well. We're gonna be fine because this. Oh, that's next rad stuff. That's not the terrain. That's what I was wondering. So we've actually got some precipitation out there and a tiny little patch in it ahead of us. We just can't really see it if we do this. Oh yeah, it is there. Okay, so we've got a little bit of precipitation straight ahead. No ice.
coming up to the clouds now. Still more icing. What's our temperature? Minus two. See, this is what I mean by when I say flight sim is a bit delayed because looking at Navigraph, these clouds have all moved to the interior already. And in fact, they're already covering the airport we took off from. But here in flight sim, they're only starting now because this system is moving from the ocean. We're flying towards the coast now, as you can see over here. And this system is moving in. And in reality, those clouds are already up here, but flights and they still only made it to this point. This little dark patch here to our left is that little patch of rain that it looks like. I think there's more green appearing over there like it looks like more rain is starting to fall out that way. It's like super low vis in that area. I was looking at the visibility chart on Navigraph as well. There's like five or six patches of really, really low visibility, but not over any airports. Right, we are 11 minutes out from SVAX. Let's see what happens to our top of descent point when we actually pass that waypoint. What a cool flat top mountain. And then off our left hand side here, the little town of Grafenet, uh, next to that dam, which is the Pinars Dam, I believe. That little airport down there at Crawfernet actually has instrument uh, procedures. That's interesting. If we really have to, we could actually divert into that. It's probably just going to be our navs. There's no ILS. It's got one, one RNAV into the runway, straight in the direction we're looking now, basically. Pretty cool. All right, we're starting to head into the clouds. This isn't the patch of rain, it's still further forward. Uh, we're passing over the highest peaks now, but look at that. Some more green dots. That wasn't there. Look, the more just are starting to appear all over. We've only got this little patch to contend with, but we'll see what things look like out that way as we get closer. More and more little green squares are starting to show up, so I think the weather is getting worse, which um, Port Elizabeth's Metal would confirm. They went from marginal VFR to IFR in the last hour or so.
Okay, we're still minus two degrees, so now that we're heading into the clouds, there's obviously moisture around. There's a pretty good chance we're gonna hit some ice over here. And we need to stay fairly high because the terrain only starts to drop down into that green as we get to as we actually arrive at George. Look at that, there's now green dots appearing on our route up ahead. I mean, George's meta did say light rain, so it looks like that's what we're gonna be heading into. Quite a lot of green appearing there where we're going. Okay. Okay, we've now got 20 knots from the right and just behind us. Feels looking good, RPM's good, torque's good, altitude, speed, true speed 155, pretty consistent. Got about six and a half minutes to our next waypoint. I think that was the longest leg of our flight. starting to head maybe not quite into the clouds but definitely going to be above them and I can only expect them to get worse as we get closer to George beautiful area though from ATC in quite a while and we're not going to change frequency until we get all the way to George Approach as we'll be on Cape Town Center up until then we've got more green appearing right near the airport actually We still haven't actually made it to that one tiny little patch. Can we see like a really dark cloud out there? Not really. Minus three degrees, surprisingly still no ice. We are above the clouds though, for the most part. Some little patches there. Such cool mountains along here. We should get the H145 and do some search and rescue missions out of that little airport down there. That'll be fun. Look at the weather, George. Now we've got some patches of yellow. Okay, temperature in the cabin is a nice 23. 
Still minus three degrees outside, but still looking chilled on the icing side. Two and a half minutes to the next waypoint. Somewhere just off to our right and in front of us is the town of Aberdeen. It's actually right where that weather is. Some farmland down below. Oh, this is actually water. Follow this road that goes into the town. So it is there somewhere. We'll check that block of rain has disappeared, but now we've got scattered little bits all over the place. So it actually looks like that cloud might have some rain under um, underneath it. We might have no clouds for a short while actually after this waypoint. Kind of start again over there. We're still minus three, no sign of icing. So I think I'm going to quickly go get a drink and a snack while we're cruising along and not much is happening. And so I'll be back with you in just a bit. Right, so we're cruising along. Let's check that everything is still good now that I'm back. RPM's good, torque is good, altitude, speed, 155, true airspeed, and we're minus four now outside. Still no icing on the aircraft that I can see. And our speed kind of cons um, confirms that because uh, if we were picking up ice, we would start losing some airspeed. So I think we're good for now. Ah, we do have a, no, we 
don't have anything to do. Everything is good. But I now have a snack, which I can eat as we go. Which dam is this that we're coming up to now? Don't actually know. Okay, but we're gonna cross over the mountains. And then it looks like just other side of the mountains is where we will be heading into the clouds. It actually looks a lot worse out that way. But I think where we're going, it's gonna end up like that just a little bit further on. Could it be that our top of descent point is actually fixed? Ha! Huh. It is indeed. That's crazy. Oh wow, look at the weather over George. Gonna be in for a fun approach. always forget about the yaw damper in this aircraft because like in the PC-12 you switch on the autopilot the yaw damper comes on as well and that doesn't happen in the Kodiak oh wow look at all of the weather out there I haven't complained at all about us being at 10,000 feet instead of 20. So I think what we're going to do in terms of ATC is we're going to follow the procedure. I think in reality, we wouldn't actually go on the, uh, on the arrival. But um, oh, that's going to cause issues. So we'll still follow the route. We're just going to stay at 10,000. And we'll call just before that top of descent marker and say that we are ready for our descent and see how that goes.
So as you can see, that meta that we have for George is now an hour old. I'm really interested to see um, in the next five or 10 minutes when that updates, because I think the weather's getting worse. So we went from 4,900 ceiling, overcast 4,900. The first meta, this one is 4.5. I think it's gonna go down. Uh, we're now at minus five degrees as well. So I really think once we get into those clouds, which we're gonna go into before we descend, I think we're definitely gonna have to pay attention to the icing issue. Still, I've been saying that the whole flight, so we haven't had anything so far, but it is getting colder. It's now minus five. At this rate, it's probably gonna be even colder once we get down there. And um, we're gonna be going into those clouds. It looked like we might actually be above the clouds. So we could be okay in terms of icing, but definitely gonna have to keep paying attention. Just looking at the edges of the windshield and stuff to see if there's any uh, ice starting to form. So keep an eye on that. Right, so I don't know how to tell this Manta to update. Because this is old. Anyway, this is now outdated. Oh, what if I click sync? No, it's still an old one. Navigraph has a new one. And George is now IFR. So, overcast at 1400. So I said, it might change all the way down. Broken at 800 feet. Overcast at 1400. And raining. Oh, sorry. Overcast at 1500. But the ceiling is reported as 900. Oh, because we've got few clouds at 700, broken at 900, and they're listing that as the ceiling, and then overcast at 50. Oh, this is a new one. So it was 1400, we've just got another one. Right. Ceiling of 900. That's gonna be interesting. If you look at our ILS, ILS minimum is 922 feet, barometric. Radio is 300 feet. So we'll be fine. But yeah, weather is definitely getting worse. This meta is only eight minutes old. See, I'm not sure how to get this one to update. Hey, there we are. So we got 922 and 300 radio. So we've gone from 4,500 to 1,500 in about 
an hour and a half. Still minus five, no signs of icing, but we're coming up to the cloud bank now. So this is where things are gonna start getting interesting. Still got a long way to go at 10,000 feet before we start descending. Looks like we're gonna be above all of those clouds, which might mean we're okay from the ice. But yeah, we'll see. Expect Zeli 1 Bravo, runway 11. One, one. Kilo Delta Kilo. Okay, so obviously they still want us on that star, even at 10,000 feet. Okay, minus 4 degrees now, 1 degree warmer. Uh, we've got about five and a half minutes to go to the next waypoint where we'll start right hand turn to get kind of parallel to the runway and then a left hand turn to cross over the airport 
start our descent and join on to ILS runway 11. Okay, it's still minus four. Everything else looks good. No icing that I can see. I think before we start heading into the clouds, we can get set up for our uh, approach. So, it's runway 11. ILS is 1095. So, nav one. Uh, we want to be. 109.5 Course of 114 which I don't think we can set now because we're in GPS mode so that's fine Okay, minimums We go here somewhere <laughs> Um is it in reference? Yes. So down to minimums. And let's do. Uh, we'll do Barrow, and that will give us. So 922 will round up to 950. Okay, that's set. Cool. Then I think we are good. Uh, oh, the other thing is somewhere here, not there, somewhere in here we set the reference speeds. Is it under options? I don't think so. Oh no, it's in the same menu, geez. Okay, let's see. Those are basically all for takeoff we don't actually have a landing oh I'll just use the speed bug I'll just do that so yeah rotated 60 VX 73 and VY 101 okay that's fine we don't actually need that then I'll just use the speed bug 54 minus 4 11 knot tail right we're about to start heading over the clouds there Terrain is all good. We're now passed over the high point, and from here it starts to get um, the terrain starts to get quite a bit lower. And basically, where we stop our 
where we stop, <laughs> where we start our top of descent, the terrain really drops off. Okay, our approach speed, BRF is 70 knots. Oh, that's interesting. So, the performance app has a different meta to Navigraph. This one still says overcast at 1400, and Navigraphs says 1400. It's changed. That's crazy. Definitely said 1500 before. Scattered at 7, broken at 9, overcast at 14. QNH 1021. Okay. Then, once we land, we're obviously going to the GA area. So, we will vacate at Alpha 2 and then taxi down to. Charlie. I think that's the GA section. Okay, to be honest, I'll just look and see at the uh, scenery that we have for George. But I think we'll take Charlie, otherwise Bravo is the next one. Alpha has the, uh, the gates for the commercial aircraft on it. So it's not that one. Well, it's not Alpha Taxiway, but the main apron, we're not going there. We're going to take Bravo. Sorry. First choice is Charlie Taxiway, which takes us up to the hangars. Second choice is Bravo Taxiway, which there's a small little apron there. So we'll just see what looks best in terms of the flight sim scenery when we arrive. Okay, and that's pretty much it for our briefing. Four degrees outside. Don't see any signs of icing, but the windscreen feels a little hazy. Maybe I'm just imagining it, or it's the sun behind us. Out of curiosity, what happens if I do this? Does it get better? Doesn't seem like it. So I think I'm just imagining it. I was gonna say, what dam is that off there? But it's the ocean. <laughs> Expecting more rain later on, it seems. Wow, visibility they're expecting to get a lot worse in the next three hours. Visibility currently 4,000 meters. In three hours' time, they're expecting it down to. 
3,000 meters with a ceiling of 600 feet. Then mist tomorrow morning. Oh no, mist tomorrow afternoon. Ceiling of 600 feet. Tomorrow morning ceiling 1,200, okay. So it looks like we possibly may not be able to uh, depart later today or even tomorrow if we want to do VFR into the little airstrip in Meisner. Almost at our top of the sand point. We're going to be descending into the clouds, minus four degrees. Everything else looks good. Speed 155. Doesn't actually look too bad down there. You can see the sea underneath. So there's a decent amount of space. I mean, it's supposed to be 1,400 feet, but at least there's some visibility underneath the clouds. We're still gonna have to go through them and it looks a bit thicker where we're going, but um, 1,400 feet AGL gives us a good, uh, decent amount of margin to be able to see the runway, I guess. Descend at about 500 feet a minute. Two minutes to top of descent. Cape Town Center, Kilo, Delta Kilo, ready for descent. Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, sailing one Bravo, runway one one, descend to 7,500 feet, QNH 1020. Descend to 7,500 feet, QNH 1020, Kilo Delta Kilo. Okay, 7,500. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo. Contact George Approach 128.2. 128.2, decimal two. Two, good day, Kilo Delta Kilo. Okay, the other thing was 1020. Like so. Approach good day, Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo is descending through flight level 100 for 7,500 feet. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, verify information Yankee. We have information Yankee, Kilo Delta Kilo. Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo George Approach QNH1020 expect radar vectors for ILS runway 11 Vectors for ILS runway 11 Kilo Delta Kilo Negative QNH1020 QNH1020 Kilo Delta Kilo Okay, so he's gonna give us vectors at some point. Minus three degrees, it's obviously warming up as we descend. We're speeding up, I've just left the power and cruise, I think it's fine, we got plenty of uh, headroom on the speed. 
So it is gonna warm up as we descend, which means we might actually, probably won't encounter any icing. We're still quite a bit above the clouds. Okay, so we'll see. My understanding of Beyond ATC is that they've said we're going to um, get vectors, but until then we just stay on the star. So I'm not gonna switch over to heading. I'm just gonna keep following the GPS and we'll stay on that star until he tells us something else. Actually doesn't look too bad down there. It's a bit worse out that way. It's pretty thick where we are now, but plenty of space underneath, I think. So we shouldn't have any issues getting in. If we do need to hold, we hold over the VOR. And then 20 minutes of hold. And if we can't get in after that, we're going to Cape Town. So that green and yellow is actually precipitation. So that means it should be raining underneath us, obviously below the clouds, but that's not cloud, that's actual precipitation. So it looks like on our final approach, all the way down to the runway, we're gonna be flying through a bit of rain. Okay, leveling off at seven and a half. So that means we'll bleed off a little bit of speed now as we level off. And I don't know if he's gonna let us make this sweeping right turn or if he's going to give us a vector if he wanted us to kind of go in a specific direction he would have given us when leaving this waypoint fly heading so and so, whatever he needs. So I think we're just gonna make this turn. But yeah, we need to descend though. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, descend to 5,500 feet, QNH1020. Descend to 5,500 feet, Kilo Delta Kilo. 
Negative. QN eight one zero 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 Backing off the power a bit, we'll bring the prop back up to full. Probably descend a little faster actually. 1500. See now he hasn't said anything, so we're still just following this approach procedure. Kilo Delta Kilo, uh, can you verify our next fix, please? Probably not going to understand that. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo did not copy. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, verify next fix. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, I show you going direct Yudalu. Oh, damn. That's why. Direct you tell you. Uh, kilo delta kilo. Ah, uh, damn. He, we're going there. I'm going to quickly just do that. Otherwise, this is going to be a nightmare. because it's actually just cutting that off because of the angle that we actually need to go to that waypoint. see what's happened so if we look at the charts I think I know what's going on oh, I just need to close this um, oh, this is actually not what I wanted uh, no not this chart uh, let's go back here this chart so if we go to the star, I wish I could actually get rid of this. Oh, this is painful. Let's see, so it takes us to Tello, and he's waiting for us to get there, and that's where it switches from the star to vectors to get on. But because I did it through flight sims flight planet thing it just joined those together and took us straight onto there so if you were flying like the phoenix or the pmdg or something like that you would have had a disconnect or, or a discontinuity and once we get to utello that's when he's going to start vectoring us that's the problem but uh it's fine we're heading there now so we should sort that out 297 so once we hit that point we want to go to 297 damn it sucks i can't use this do that there's no way to or right
right click on this. Never use the mouse? Nah. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, leave Udalu heading 025, expect radar vectors for ILS runway 11. Leave Utelu heading 025, Kilo Delta Kilo. Okay, see there we go, because that's the point where we transition over to vectors. So at that point we want to do 025. What are we doing now? 261. 025 is going to be like behind us. Interesting. So let's go. If I disengage this, we'll just stay on that heading and dial this around to 25. So it's actually not quite there, it's over here. Kilo Delta Kilo, turn right, heading 345 vectors for the approach. I turn to 345 Kilo Delta Kilo. Yeah, so scrap the Utella thing, we're just going to turn right to 345. Okay, now I can jump back to this and we can set that course, which I can't remember. It was 114. Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, 1 2 miles from CI 11, turn right, heading 080, maintain 2500 feet until established on the final approach course, cleared ILS runway 11. Okay, so we're turning right to 080, maintaining 2500 until established. Turn right, heading 080. Set to maintain 2,500 feet until established ILS runway 11 Kilo Delta Kilo. Okay, down to 2.5. And Glide Slope's live, localizer seems to be alive, and 114 is set automatically, which I forgot happens in the Kodiak. Okay, we'll back off the power a bit. And uh, that's alive, that's alive, so we just want to descend faster than that glide slope is coming down so we can stay underneath it. And uh, cool, then we can arm the approach, I guess. Okay, we'll report established to him and he will then hand us over to the tower. And we will then report established to the tower runway 11. Temperature is now what six degrees so I think we're all good going into the clouds but what I will do is turn this on that's already on taxi and landing lights all good cool I think we're good to go so now we just need to intercept that ILS okay we're well below the glide slope so we probably don't need to descend this fast then do 800 feet a minute down to 25 keep our speed around 130 and then 70 knots on the approach so we want to be basically 50 feet over the touchdown uh, sorry over the threshold at 70 knots in theory might actually go a bit further than that because um, quite a long runway. Sorry, I couldn't skip this. Yeah, we're still quite far out actually. Just realized now. than 10 miles. Okay, 
Yeah, there's localizer. Kilo Delta Kilo established on the localizer. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, affirmative. Okay, so we're still too far out. Yeah, we're outside 10 miles. So we're still too far to hand over the tower. Okay, we're on the localizer now. Glide slope still has a way to go. We need to put in a bit of power because we're leveling off at two and a half. Nine degrees, so we shouldn't see any icing in the clouds. Visibility actually looks fine. The rain's up in front of us, according to next ride. But uh, there's plenty of space underneath the clouds for us to be able to see the runway and make it in. Well below the glide slope, we're on the localizer. Everything else looks good. Zulu Sierra yeah, Kilo Delta Kilo, contact George Tower 118 Decimal I was going to say, it should hand us over to the tower about now. 118 Decimal 9 Kilo Delta Kilo. Okay, just double check, 118 Decimal 9. Right, Glide Slope is coming down now. George Tower, Kilo Delta Kilo on the ILS runway 11. Zulu Sierra, Kilo Delta Kilo, George Tower, continue. Continue approach, Kilo Delta Kilo. Okay, we can start backing the power off because we're about to intercept the ILS. We'll do that nice and gently. Well, we're about to uh, intercept the glide slope and start descending. And we're probably going to start seeing the rain as we do that. Zulu Sierra, Kilo Delta Kilo. Wind 115 at 12, gust 22, runway 11 clear to land. Jeez, okay. Runway 11 clear to land, kilo delta kilo. Sure. Gusting to 22, I wasn't expecting that. But you see, that's again flight sims where they're not being the same as the Meta. The Meta didn't say any gusts. See any rain? Or is there a little bit of rain on the windshield? No, I don't think there is. Okay, we can start slowing down and we've got the first stage of flaps. Plenty of visibility. Runways in sight. Got the puppies as well, and two white, two red. Next stage of laps. More power to compensate. Flaps full. sunny here. Oh, that's a weird picture. Okay, 
no damper coming out. Got a pilot disengaged. actually feeling quite gusty, although the, uh, the wind indicator doesn't seem to be jumping around all that much. I think we're, the airport's in a little hole here. Look at the clouds around us. It's definitely raining out there to our right and up ahead. so slow landing the Kodiak on these big runways and you're used to coming in it's tiny little dirt strips and everything feels like it's happening so quickly yeah it just feels like we have so much time it's a massive runway in front of us Exit next available taxiway, Kilo Delta Kilo. Okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to turn left because turning right is going <laughs> to take us out to nowhere. To show you what I mean, where the right taxiway doesn't go anywhere. Okay, I just checked it. It come out of beta. Yes, it did. While we're there, we might as well bring this back. Get the flaps up. There's two wind socks attached to each other, and both of them are showing different wind directions. That's fascinating. <coughs> I think it's a taxiway Bravo. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo. Contact ground 122 decimal 65. 122.65, Kilo Delta Kilo. Just gotta check that I'm right. This is Taxiway Bravo. No, it's Alpha 2. Ground Kilo Delta Kilo on Alpha 2, request taxi. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, welcome to George Airport. Say parking or advise if need assignment. Uh, hmm. I don't know where any of these are. So, ramp 3, Kilo Delta Kilo. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, say again ramp number. Ramp 3, Kilo Delta Kilo. Zulu Sierra Kilo Delta Kilo, ramp 3. Theory at this airport is incomplete and a taxi route cannot be created. Taxi at pilot's discretion. Perfect. Taxi at pilot's discretion to ramp 3, Kilo Delta Kilo. Okay, strobe lights and landing lights can come off. 
that can stay, that can stay. So we're gonna go to the left here. Hopefully all these developers are gonna update their uh, scenery so that Beyond ATC can actually work with all of these different things. Although I'm not always too worried, especially at smaller airports, to just do my own taxi. I'm sure like the, the developers making the bigger airports and the more detailed stuff will at some point update them so that it does match the charts, what Beyond ATC tells you, because here it didn't pick up any of the gates. There are t uh, six gates, Alpha 1 to 6, which are at the main terminal. It didn't see any of that, it just said ramp 3, 7, and 10. So, yeah. Where can we park here? This is the helipad. I reckon other side the helipad. Okay, that's done, that can come off, 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 and off. That's done, that's done, that's done, that's done. And welcome to George, where it is actually quite windy outside. Oh, wait, that's, that actually sounds a bit like thunderstorms, or is that, nah, it's just the wind. The weather looks pretty nasty out that way. Right, anyway, that is us safely arrived at George. And when the weather clears up a bit, we're going to be continuing from here to a tiny little airstrip. I don't even think it has a name. It'll have some sort of name in flight sim, but uh, it's just a little private airstrip in the Neisner area. And we're gonna have to go there VFR because there's no instrument procedures, nothing. It's just a little, uh, I think it's grass. It might be asphalt, but I think it's grass. But that's where we're gonna go next. So very cool flight. Started off early in the morning, the entire way through thought we were gonna develop icing, which never happened. And uh, yeah, another cool IFR flight with Beyond ATC as well. And as always, the Kodiak is still one of my all-time favorite aircraft. But anyway, that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Uh, if you did make it all the way to this point, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you did enjoy it, you know what to do down below. And I'll see you in the next one.